Hi, this is Carly from Spectre 3D Technologies. Just want to thank you for joining us for this short video tutorial, and I hope that it can provide you with a little inspiration to get you started for your own ornament for our Habitat for the Holidays 3D Printed Ornament Contest. To learn more about the contest and submit your ornament, you can visit our website at www.habitatornamentcontest.com. For this tutorial, we will be using Autodesk Fusion 360, which if you don't already have it, you can download at fusion360.autodesk.com. Once there, you will see that there's an option for a free 30-day trial, and the program is also free to students, enthusiasts, hobbyists, and startups. Fusion, you will find, is a little bit more complicated than some of the other free software programs that are available, but it is an extremely robust program, and once you get used to it, it's, a, it's very easy to use. So for this tutorial, we are going to be creating just a basic ball ornament with a cutout shape. In this case, we're going to be doing a bell on two sides and the words Happy Holidays on one side. I chose to do this particular ornament because there are so many things that you can do with this basic concept. Just let your imagination run wild and you can do all sorts of fun cutouts. All right, so let's get started. Uh, you will see here's the Fusion interface. It's a super simple design. There's not a lot of clutter. All of the tools that we're going to be used are found on this one ribbon, so that's really handy. On the Create panel, which is the first one here, there are lots of 3D primitive shapes is what they're called, which is a super simple way to create basic 3D shapes. With these, we could create a sphere really easily, but it wouldn't be hollow and you wouldn't get the shape that you want. So instead, we're going to use the sketch tools. Start by expanding the sketch tools and hover over the circle until you see a flyout. We're going to choose the top one there, which is the center diameter circle. Once the tool is active, you just simply click to select the center and then drag your mouse to, to create the shape. The first thing you do is choose the plane that you want to draw on. In this case, you can choose either of the vertical planes. Right, so then now we're going to choose the center point. We're going to pick the origin at the middle here, which is the circle with the two little triangles darkened. And then just click and drag out with your mouse till we're at 100 millimeters. And you can see the size here in the little box next to the cursor. You can also opt to just input a specific distance in the box. Click again when you get to 100 millimeters. And now we need to create a smaller circle inside of this one. This will determine the thickness of the ornament. To simply reactivate the circle command, you can right click and you will see at the top of the marking menu here that it says repeat center diameter circle. Choose this and then once again, you're gonna click on the origin and drag out, this time creating a circle that's 95 millimeters. This will give our ornament a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. Since the easiest way to create the shape that we want is with the revolve tool, we need to have two things, a profile and an axis that it will revolve around. The profile is any closed shape, and the axis is often a sketch line. In this case, we don't have anything that would work as an axis, so we have to create one. And we'll do this by activating the line command. By default, this is always at the top of the sketch panel, right over here. So just click on that, and we can start at the top of the circle and we'll sketch a line all the way from the top to the bottom. You might need to zoom in a little bit here to see it better, and you can do this by using the scroll button on your mouse. Once you've successfully divided the circle, you won't need one of the halves because you're going to revolve the other half around 360 degrees, so we're just going to trim it away. You can do this by expanding the sketch panel and selecting the trim command. Now, when you hover your cursor over a portion of the sketch, you will see that it highlights red. If the red area is what you want to trim away, you simply left click with your mouse and it will remove that portion. So we want to remove both of the half circles on one side of the line so that you're left with just a half circle like this. Okay, now that we have our profile and our axis, we can use our revolve tool to create our shape. Expand the create dropdown and choose revolve. The program is first going to prompt you for a profile, and this is going to be the exterior portion of the circle. So make sure that when you highlight it, you should see a blue highlight only around the outer portion of the circle, not the inner. This is going to create your hollow shape that you want. Once you have the proper portion selected, you can go down and choose your axis. 
in the dialog box, you'll see that it says no selection here. Just go ahead and click on that and then choose the vertical line that divided the circle and this will be your axis. As soon as you have both of these parts inputted, your shape will be created automatically. Now we have the ball and we want to create the shape that will be cut out of the ornament. And this is going to be a bell, but there are tons of simple sketches that you can create. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and hide that sphere that you just created because it's going to be in your way. Uh, to do this, you want to just simply expand the body folder in the browser and you can click on the light bulb next to the body one to toggle off this visibility. You do, however, want to have a guide just so that you can make sure that the bell isn't larger than the circle it will be cut out of and the original profile sketch is perfect for that. So we can expand the sketch folder and turn on the visibility next to the sketch. Now that we know that as long as this bell is smaller than this sketch, that it will be able to cut it out nicely. You do want to give yourself some wiggle room on either side just so that you don't cut out too much by accident. So we're only going to draw our bell in about half of this space. So let's go ahead and activate the line command at the top of the sketch panel again, and we'll choose the same vertical plane that we had activated before. Starting about one quarter of the way down, click in the center to start the line command. You're going to start by drawing a diagonal line to the left, and you want this to be nice and short, only a couple of millimeters. And this might be easier if you just zoom in a bit. Right, once you have started the line command, you can draw an arc by just holding down the left mouse button and dragging it in the direction that you want the arc to be created in. You might have to hover over the beginning portion of your line a little bit. So we're going to draw a nice gradual arc that extends a little bit past the axis line. Once you have it how you'd like it, just click to create the arc. Okay, now we want to add a little taper to the bottom of the bell. And we're going to use the same method for this. Just hover over the beginning of your line a little bit, hold down the left mouse button, and drag your cursor to create the shape. This time you're going to drag in the opposite direction and you want the arc to be a little bit more pronounced. At about the three-quarter mark of the sketch, just go ahead and click to create your arc. And then once you have that, you can just draw a horizontal line back to the vertical center. The bell should turn a tan color. This indicates that it is a closed loop. Since we now are pretty comfortable that the bell will indeed fit inside of the circle, we can turn off the original sketch by toggling the light bulb next to the sketch in the browser. Okay. Now, we could just re-sketch this exact same thing on the other half, but it's going to be hard to get it exactly symmetrical and perfect, so instead we can just mirror it. So under sketch, choose the mirror command, and you want to choose the sketch that you're going to mirror. Uh, the easiest way to do this is with the selection window. So you want to place your cursor to the right corner of your sketch just above it. Hold down your left mouse button and drag it down to the left. And you'll see a window appear. You want to make sure that your entire sketch fits inside of that window. And it will select all of the individual sketch lines that we have inside of it. If you were to select any lines that you didn't want to, you could just click on them again to deselect them. In this case, we are actually going to deselect the center vertical line because we want that to be our mirror line. Click on that and you should see that the number of selections will decrease by one. Now in the dialog box, click next to the mirror line and you should select the vertical line you just deselected. The sketch will automatically be created across the mirror line. Okay, now we'll add a quick clapper and a handle under the sketch, choose the arc, three-point arc, and select two points at the bottom of your bell to determine the width of the clapper, and a third to determine how long it will be. Then you'll just do the same to create a handle at the top. Once you're done, select Stop Sketch. Okay, so we're now ready to cut out the shape from the ornament. Start by turning the visibility of the ornament body back on. Then you're going to use the extrude tool to cut the shape away. Under Create, Activate Extrude. And the first thing that you're going to want to select is the profile to extrude. 
be sure to choose both sides of the bell body, both sides of the clapper, and both sides of the handle. In the dialog box, you'll see that by default, the direction is set to one side. This means that the bell would only be cut from one side of the ornament. Since we want the bell shape to be cut out from both sides of our ornament, we will change this to symmetric. We can also change the operation to cut so that we are removing geometry rather than adding geometry. Now, all we have to do is use the arrows that appear on the profile to pull the bell shape out past the circle. To rotate your model so that you can see the arrow better, you can activate the orbit command in the navigation bar, or you can hold down control on your keyboard while holding down the scroll wheel on your mouse and then drag to your desired position. The shape will turn red, indicating that it is functioning as a cut tool. When you have dragged the bell to the desired position, click OK, and you can see that you have successfully created your bell cutout. All right, so now we're going to add some text to the blank side of your ornament. Rotate your ornament until you're looking straight at a solid portion of your circle. Then, under Sketch, activate the text command and choose the plane that you are currently looking at. Click somewhere on your ornament and the text dialog box will open. Here you can type your text directly into the dialog box. I'm going to start by typing the word happy. Then in the height section, I can adjust the size of my text. Uh, in this case, I'm going to change it to 20 millimeters. Uh, you can use the blue circle next to your text to reposition it. Just drag it down a little bit so that it's more centered. When you have the text centered where you want it, you can click OK. Then right click and select repeat text at the top of the marking menu. Repeat the same steps as before, this time entering the word holidays. Since this is a longer word, I'm going to make the text a bit smaller. You may have to experiment a bit to figure out which size is best. Note that you can also change the font in the dialog box. Once you are happy with your text, you're going to use the extrude command once more to cut out the shape. Text, however, can be a little bit difficult to select. To make it easier on you, we are going to adjust the selection filters so that you will ignore the other sketches and choose just the text. Under Select, expand the selection filters flyout. By default, they will all be selected. You can easily deselect all of the check marks by toggling the check mark next to Select All. Once the checks are cleared, choose Text Selection. Now you can activate the Extrude tool under the Create dropdown and you will be able to easily select the text. For the profile, just click on both of the awards. This time you want to leave the direction to one side because if you choose Symmetric, the text on one side of your ornament will be backwards. If you do want to add text on both sides, you can simply repeat these steps on the other side. Again, just pull the text out past your circle shape using the arrow. Once you have cut out your shape, and this may take a second to process, go ahead and click OK. You now have an ornament with a bell cut out on two sides and a happy holidays on one side. All right, I hope that you have found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to get your entries into us by midnight on December 1st. If you would like to have a step-by-step -step PDF of this tutorial, just head to our website at www.spectra3d.com and sign up for our newsletter. In the notes, just indicate that you would like the bell cutout tutorial PDF. If you would like to have some prints made of this ornament, they make a great gift for friends or family for the holidays, and we can definitely do that. To find out more about creating an STL file from your ornament and submitting it to us, check out our video on ornament submissions with Fusion. Uh, if you would like to learn more about designing with Fusion, you can learn more about Autodesk training from CAD Learning on our website. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing your submissions for the contest.